All right, so we're looking at the AP Pre-Calculus 2024 FRQs. This is number three. So this is the start of the non-calculator portion of the FRQs. If there are any corrections, I'll put it in the pinned comments below or if anything I'm not entirely sure I look up later is incorrect. I will put it as a pinned comment. The tire is a car of radius nine inches and a person rolls the tire forward at a constant rate on level ground. Point W at the edge of the tire touches the ground at time T equals 0.5 seconds. The tire completes a full rotation. The next time it touches the ground is five half seconds. The maximum height W above the ground is 18 inches. As the tire rolls, the height W above the ground periodically increases and decreases. The sinusoidal function H mod models the point W above the ground in inches as a function of time in seconds. The graph of H in its dashed midline for two full cycles is shown. Five points F, G, J, K, and P are labeled on the graph. No scales indicate no axes are presented. Determine the possible coordinates for T, H, and T for the five points, F, G, J, H, K. Okay, so um, this is a graph of sine and cosine. So center line is always gonna be, like the lowest point that W is ever gonna be is at zero, and the highest it's gonna be is, has a radius of nine inches. So in terms of distance, the highest distance above the ground is gonna be 18 inches. So that means your peak is gonna be 18, and your minimum is going to be zero. You're going to go between zero and 18. That means nine is your midline, right? That's right around here. It's going to go up and down between the center line of a distance of nine there. Now, in terms of the time, okay, so they're saying um, it's zero. There's a zero at one half second. So, for example, this this could be at one half second, 0 0.5, one half second. And, at, it, and the next time it touches the ground is going to be five half second here. Right, so, oh, I'm sorry, uh, I need to be putting the zeros. What am I doing? That's the center line. Um, so when does it touch the ground is here. That's maybe one half of a second. And then here again at five halves of a second. So that means the period is going to be two seconds, the difference between here, right? So um, now remember, when, we, when you graph sines and cosines, you always think about like, well, halfway between here and here, so, uh, so, so each one of these, so the whole distance is two seconds. So each of these is going to be one second. So this is going to be three halves, right? And then here to here is going to be halfway. That's going to be one. So each of these segments is, is half a second here, right? So this could be zero. This could be what negative one half. Okay. And they want, they want coordinates T and H of T for those possible times. Um, I don't know, you know, I, I got a negative one half over here. I, I would be okay with the negative one half. I don't know if that's something they would dock you for, but honestly, that's probably what I would do. I would say like, well, he's rolling forward. It doesn't mean that the time had to start at zero, but if you wanted to do that, you would have to shift everything. So you'd have to say like, um, well, okay. So my initial take, okay. For point F is I'm going to say it's the coordinate negative one half and the height is 18. Okay, for G, I'm gonna say it's time zero and a height of nine. And then for K, I'm gonna say it's one and nine. And then here for P, oh wait, uh, oh no, sorry, I forgot J. J is gonna be one half and zero. K, uh, we did K, and then P is gonna be three halves and 18. Now, if they didn't like it, they said like, well, you got to start at time t equals zero, which I don't think they would. You would have to backtrace here and say like, okay, well, then this is one half. Okay. And then the peak is one second later. So this would be three, this would be three halves, five halves. Like you'd have to add one second to all of these if you were to do it that way. The function h can be written as this form, a sine Okay, um, find the constants A, B, and C. Now, sine has a dot pattern. When we sketch sine, I always like to do a dot pattern. And I'm going to, um, you know, if, if we use these points, I, I think maybe you would want to be consistent with these values. So let's say I use my coordinates here. So if I, if I start at, this is where T is equal to zero, this is my dot pattern that looks like a sine. It kind of looks like a boop, boop, boop. That's what a sine looks like. Now, sine normally, without an inversion would normally go like this. This is the dot pattern that I use for sketching sine, right? So it normally look like this for sine. So it's inverted and the amplitude is, um, the amplitude is nine. So it's gonna be negative nine sine 
And then the b part is 2 pi divided by the period. The period we decided was 2 seconds, so it's 2 pi over 2. And then do we have to shift anything over? We don't because if I start here at 0, like, like the way I did it, then um, there's no horizontal shift. So you could just do t plus 0. And then plus the vertical shift. Well, the center line is normally right at 0, but we vertically shifted by 9. So this is what I write, negative 9 sine of pi t plus 9. And then that means the constant a is negative 9, b is um, 1, no pi, no, what? Uh, pi. Yeah, b is pi, and then c is 0, and d is 9. There are multiple answers. This is not the only answer, okay? Like you can shift this horizontally left and right. You could probably do anything with the C. You could add, um, you could honestly add any multiple of two or, or plus or minus two. So any even number for C would work here. Or if you made this positive, then you would have to make this C would have to be like an odd number or something like that in order to make that work, okay? Uh, refer to the graph in part A, the T coordinate of case T1. Okay, so that's K. So they're saying this coordinate here is T1. And then the T coordinate, this is T2. On the interval, which is falling true is about H. It is positive incre increasing. So A is true. H is positive and decreasing. Increasing means like the, y, the, 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 the values are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right, between here and here. So and it's and it's definitely all of these values are positive. So they're all they're never negative, um, and then this one's not decreasing. So it's a. Describe how the rate of change is. Okay, so how is kind of what we say like like, it's it's going up, but it's going up less and less as we move along, right? So the rate of change of h is decreasing. Is decreasing because it's not um, uh, it's not going up by as much as you move along along the curve here. So like over be, and then the way you said it, it's because over equal intervals, um, h of t um, increases by smaller amounts. Okay, that's what it means for the rate of change to be decreasing. 